Hello guys, welcome back to our channel Gate Set Go. Here we are back with the top 30 series for Strength of Patel. I hope you have gone to the top 30 series for Engineering Mechanics and I hope you got a bit idea regarding how to tackle with the top questions of the Engineering Mechanics. Now today we are going to start with Strength of Patel and here comes your first question. A motor driving a solid circular steel shaft transmits 40 kW of power at 500 RPM. If the diameter of the shaft is 40 mm, the maximum shear stress in the shaft in megapascal. My dear students, whenever you deal with this kind of question, that is nothing but an LED type of question, you need to take a clear alert that this kind of question plays a major role when it comes to the unit. Suppose you have given the unit as megapascal and you are writing your answer in terms of pascal, you will not get a single marks in this type of question because it's it, the good part of this NAD type of question is there is no negative mark but to the worst part it is like the unit to, should be matched with your answer so if you check it out what they are asking you a motor driving a solid circular steel shaft transmits 40 kilowatt of power so let down write down what is given over there we are given with power that is nothing but 40 kilowatt okay next they have also given you an RPM of 500 RPM and N given to you is 500 RPM then if the diameter of the shaft is 40 mm they have also given you a diameter of the shaft as 40 mm a very simple sum now they are asking you what is the maximum shear stress in the shaft that is nothing but tau tau is nothing but maximum shear stress especially I can say it is tau max so let's go let's check it out they are asking you tau max they have given you the power, they have given you the RPM, they have given you the diameter. Now let's try to recollect the formula. What can I say about the power? I can write my power as nothing but 2 pi nt by 60. Am I right? We all know the formula that power can be written as 2 pi nt by 60. Good. Now what about the tau max? So this is my shaft. Okay. This is my shaft. I need to find what is the maximum shear stress acting on this a kind of a shaft so in torsion we have also seen a formula in torsion we have also seen the formula that tau max should be equal to 60 t upon pi dq am i right you might, have, you might have gone through this formula that is tau max is equal to 16 t upon pi dq above power here hua hai, right we have given with power that is 40 kilowatt Aapka power value of Whenever you put the value of power over here, you also know the value of RPM that is n. From here, you will be able to find the value of tau. Let's put it out. So power is how much? Power is 40 kilowatts. So I'm writing 40 into 10 raised to 3. Okay. Should be equal to 2 pi into RPM as 500 RPM into T by 60. After solving, you get your torque as 763.8 newton meter. Okay. Once you get the value of torque as 763.8 Newton meter, what I'm going to do, I'm going to find out the tau max by just putting the T inside this value, that is tau max. So tau max is nothing but tau max is equal to 16 into whatever the value you have got from T, that is 763.8 upon pi into what is your D value over here, that is 40. My dear students, be alert when you're putting this kind of mm in this kind of unit over here whatever you are writing that is 16 tau that is 763.8 is in newton meter so i can write that diameter should also be in terms of meter not in terms of mm so i can say it is nothing but 0.04 raised to cube and from here after solving you will get a tau max as 60 mega pascal in short i can say it will be in the form that 60 into 10 raised to 3 pascal that is nothing 60 into 10 raised to 6 pascal that is nothing but your 60 mega pascal so your answer is for this question is answer is nothing but 60 mega pascal so which formulas you need to be highlighted over here the first formula is nothing but the power ka formula that is p is equal to 2.8 by 60 and whenever we do with the shaft the maximum shear stress which comes over there is nothing but 16 t upon 5 dq so these are the two formulas which you need to be remembered for this solving this kind of numerical i hope this sum is clear. let's go to the next sum a very simple sum as uh, we had seen in the part uh, part previous sum itself, uh, let's uh, go to the next sum over here. That is a consider a beam with a circular cross section of diameter d. Okay, the ratio of the second movement of area about the neutral axis to the section modulus of the area. A very simple sum, which is carried only for one mark. Uh, let's talk about let's talk about what is second movement of area. That is nothing but movement of inertia about the neutral axis. 
So if you check out your cross section that is given is a circle and I can say this is nothing but my I axis okay and this is nothing but my I Y The properties or the speciality of a circle is nothing but both the moment of inertia about X X and moment of inertia about Y Y is nothing but equal to what? What we say? It is nothing but equal to pi by 64 into d raised to 4. Now, what is guys uh, section modulus? Section modulus of the area. Let's check it out. What is section modulus? We have the formula for section modulus as that is nothing but we normally denote it by z that is equal to i by y. Okay. So, in this case, y will be nothing but let's say if I check it out over here, this is my diameter d. Okay, the overall diameter d. So if I check it out for the top layer, so this is nothing but my y. Okay, this is nothing but my y over here. And if I check, if I more precisely, I can say y is also equal to d by two. Right. So what is i? i is over here again, pi by sixty-four into d raised to four upon your y that is d by two. Okay. Uh, they are asking you the ratio of both. That is nothing but section modulus and the moment of inertia. So I can say the ratio of both is nothing but i upon z that is equal to if you have your pi by 64 into d raised to 4 upon pi by 64 uh, d raised to 4 upon d by 2 finally you will get your answer as equal to d by 2. The option is a d by 2. Okay. So very simple sum in this kind of numerical you hardly you should take hardly you should take two to three seconds to identify this kind of numerical or else you can straight away understand like they are asking the ratio of i by z what is z z is i by y so finally you get y so that is the answer for d but you don't need for this kind of calculation this is only for making you understand at this time itself whenever you are solving this kind of numerical in the gate make sure that this kind of numerical clear it out within two to three seconds itself not more than that okay, okay let's, let's go, go to the next sum uh, this was asked in the year 2017 set two. Okay, what they are asking you, a steel bar is held by two fixed support as shown in the figure. Great. And is subject to an increase of temperature delta T equal to 100 degrees Celsius. So there is a temperature variation that is delta T equal to 100 degrees Celsius. Okay. And if the coefficient of thermal expansion and Young's modulus of elasticity, that is alpha is given to you as 11 into 10 to minus 6 per degree Celsius. And uh, the he E value, that is Young's modulus is given to you as 200 gigapascal. Great. The magnitude of thermal stress induced in the bar. So now, if you check out this sum, the diagram, that is nothing but two a rigid bar is being fixed at the two end. You can see this end one and end two. It is being fixed over there. Now you already know that every material has the property to expand when you are trying to increase the temperature, right? So that is the reason why you might have seen that in the as the temperature variations, the rail breakage is happening. The rail having gap between the, the rail, you know, you might have seen that there is always a gap between the joints of the rails, right? You might have seen it, that this is suppose a rail, okay, okay, over here, and another rail which is being joined from here, let's say, so there will be always a small amount of very minute gap between them. Why we keep this gap? Why it is required to keep the very small minute gap? The reason behind it is in the summer season or as the temperature increases, since the material will be expanding so that they can compensate the increase in the length, or else there will be failure due to thermal stresses getting induced into the material and which will lead to the failure of the entire rail system. So, what we can do, we normally keep some gap between them so that as the temperature increases, the gap can be compensated. So, come back. So, this was regarding how to avoid the thermal stresses. Now, what is thermal stresses? If suppose, let's say, I am removing this end, I am giving it a blank, like this is a bar, and now I am going to change the temperature. I want to ask you one question, whether my increase in temperature will induce any kind of stress into the material? Think, I am asking you a question that I am increasing the temperature in this bar, does any kind of stress will happen into it? Obviously no. Why? Because it is being a free expansion. There is no restriction from any kind. So as you increase the temperature, the material will expand and there will be no stress generated inside the body. So when the stress comes into place, when you are avoiding the material to expand or when you are putting restriction in its path. So over here in this sum, 
they are putting a rigid wall over there so there is no gap even to expand so as soon as you increase the temperature the stresses will be induced into the material so now how to remember the formula very simple you just need to remember the formula of delta l that is elongation of a bar under thermal actions that is delta l is equal to l alpha delta t i can find strain the strain is nothing but delta l upon l that is l alpha delta t upon l so strain is equal to alpha delta t am i right what is young's modulus e is stress upon strain so i can say now i can more precisely say this thermal stress so i get the sigma t equal to e into strain that is nothing but young's modulus i hope yes they have given you the value of young's modulus also and uh, from here you know the strain i'm just putting all the values over there the sigma thermal stress has become sigma t equal to e into epsilon so what is e value e is 200 into 10 raised to 9 into epsilon alpha delta t i'm just writing epsilon is nothing but alpha delta t okay so alpha is 11 into 10 raised to minus 6 into delta t as 100 degrees celsius and finally after solving it i guess they are asking you thermal stress right yes they are asking you thermal stress is equal to the bar so sigma t is equal to 220 okay 220 mega pascals right when you solve it you will be getting 220 into 10 to 6 in mega pascal you can write it as 220 very simple sum based on thermal stress let's go to the next let's go to the next sum what they are asking you rod of length 20 mm is stretched to make a rod of length 40 mm this okay this sum was asked in the year 2017 for two marks in the set 2 Let's see the question. A rod of length 20 mm is subjected to a may is stressed to make a rod of length 40 mm. So initially the length was 20 mm. Then it is becoming to 40 mm. Subsequently it is compressed to make a rod of final length 10 mm. Fine, fine, right? Consider the longitudinal tensile strain as positive and the compressive strain as negative. The total true longitudinal strain in the rod. Oh, let's see, let's see. Let's look at here. How to start this sum? Okay, guys. Suppose this is my rod over here. Okay. Initial rod. I am going to consider this as A1, and I am going to consider this as L1. So what they are telling me? They are telling that they are first elongating it. So I can say that when I am elongating it, obviously my area will get reduced. So I am going to consider the next area as A2, and I am going to say that this length is nothing but L2. Fine. Then might be that afterwards I am going to compress it. So I might be the diameter will increase. So I can say the diameter is increased and the length is being reduced. So let's say this is my L3 and this is my A3. Ultimately, when you check out all the three rods, what you can say? You can say simply that A1, L1. I can say that volume is remaining same. I can say V1 is equal to V2 is equal to V3. That is nothing but object one, object two, and object three. So the volume is remaining constant. So I can say it is nothing but A1 into L1. Should be equal to a2 into l2. Should be equal to a3 into l3. Can I say like this? Yes, I can say it because the volume is remaining constant. I'm not, I'm not subtracting any material from it. I'm not adding any material from it. I'm just simply elongating it. So when I'm elongating it, obviously my diameter will get reduced. You might have seen it in the Poisson's ratio concept. So now what they are asking you? They are asking you true longitudinal strain, right? They are asking you true longitudinal strain. So what is the formula for true longitudinal strain? We already know that the epsilon t, that is longitudinal strain, is given by log of nothing but a1 by a3. That is nothing but initial area by final area. We don't know what is happening in the intermediate. I'm not going to concern with that. I only want to take care about the initial area and the final area. Then I can simply say that is also equal to log of a1 by a3. Check it out. Yes, this is a1 by a3. So can I say that a1 by a3 can also be written as l3 by l1? Just put the values of l3 by l1 over here. Uh, what is the length? Final length they have given you, right? They have given you the length as final length as 10. So it's log of 10 by what is original length? It's 20. So it's log of 0.5. And I guess it's obviously as from 3, it's equal to minus 0.69. Can check it out. Log of 0.5 is Minus 0.69, and finally you get the answer as B. Great, very simple sum. So you need to take care whenever you are dealing with the sums based on the true longitudinal stream, the formula for it, and the concept behind it.